Hi everybody, it's hot. Yeah. It's like hot, hot. And it's predicted to get hotter. Uh, we are in the middle of uh, the biggest heat wave the UK has ever seen. Yeah, we're not um, used to it. So I'm going to actually be wearing my hat when I'm outside working, which might look stupid to you, but trust me, um, I'm a ginger and I need a hat outside in the sun. <laughs> we're predicted 40 degrees uh, in the south of England this week and about 37 degrees at where we are in Wales. So hot, hot, hot. Although we're in Wales, so it might be four. It might be four degrees, yeah, because we're in Wales. It might rain. It is Wales, after all. Right, uh, today we are doing cockpit work. Yeah, and we've got one day again. <laughs> one day. <laughs> Trip it over. So, um, uh, yes, what I'm looking at today is starting to think about getting the steering system back together. Uh, the three things that we're focused on really intently in order to do this splash by September, if we possibly can, uh, the essential stuff to launch is floating um, with propulsion and steerage. At the minute, as you know, the rudder assist, uh, uh, assembly is disassembled. So I'm just going to have a look at putting the steering system back on, which has been taken home and uh, it's been rebuilt to the point where it's working now. Uh, we'll do another full rebuild of it uh, probably next year, but it, it's, it's smooth and it's working. Here's what we're looking at. This plate here, uh, covers over a big hole that I cut out when I removed the steering system from Melody uh, 18 months, two years ago. Uh, and there's a plate here that's just been tacked in place to stop the rain pouring in. I can always tack that back if today doesn't go as planned. And this piece of wood is covering up the hole for the emergency tiller. So I'm going to start off by removing this plate and making measurements to make a new one. While I'm fabbing stuff and doing weldy, grindy, cutty, plasma cuttery, makey bits, Melissa's up there sanding the, the starboard side side decks. Um, we're not going to film a huge amount of that because last week's episode was just that, so or the week before, I think. Um, but there's no point seeing exactly the same thing twice. It's not. It's boring for us, and it's even more boring for you. But it is happening. I am looking for my adjustable spanner. Um, basically, let me just show you, I'll find my adjustable spanner in a minute, what I'm planning to do today. I'm planning to remount this lot, which is our steering system. Uh, sorry, that lot, which is our steering system. Now, what's got to happen is this. This is the gearbox, right? Um, and that goes below deck at this point. Everything from this point up goes above deck. Now, the problem that I've got is I've got to replace that patch in the floor and uh, make, with a hole big enough to lower this gearbox through, uh, but I've got to cut a hole in it that diameter, which I think is 80 mil. Um, I'm just going to measure that now, actually. Um, uh, where are we? Uh, mm, looks more like 85 mil actually. But I'll get I'll get this separated and apart so that I can um, I can measure that diameter because I've got to cut a hole in a piece of metal to go over that. Got that piece off. What I've got to do now is um, undo the the other drive on the top of the shaft so I can pull the shaft out. There you go. Put that here. So Nigel's had this um, back in his workshop and one of the issues is that the, the central shaft that goes up the middle of this is kind of seized onto the top of the gearbox. What Nigel was intending to do was two things. Firstly, take this apart and rebuild the gearbox so that it was working smoother than I had it. The other job was to separate the main shaft, the vertical shaft, from where it goes into the top of the gearbox. Now, Nigel's got a full-time job just like everybody else and he hasn't had time to do that, which is absolutely fine. 
and we can make we can we can work around that for now. Uh, it is something that we'll do before we start crossing any big oceans, um, so that this is fully fully serviceable. But for now, it's perfectly so it's perfectly fine, and I'm going to put it back on in such a way that it's it's dead easy to remove. Internal diameter of of U is 93 mil. 90 mil would be fine, wouldn't it? Yeah, 90 mil. <coughs> There's a heck of a lot of tolerance there, so it's. But a 90 mil hole in my plate, which then has to clamp between that and that. Let's go and cut a 90 mil hole in this piece of plate, hey? I haven't got a piece of six mil quite wide enough for the to make the hot patch in one piece, so I'm making out of two pieces. Uh, but again, that's absolutely fine because it means it gives me somewhere to start my plasma cut. I can just start with in between the two, cut my uh, radius, clean up the inside of the radius, and then weld the two pieces together. So it actually, it's fine, and I'll uh, I'll V it and weld it from both sides. It'll be mega. And the plasma cut is being a bit of a colossal pain in the bum it keeps cutting out and I've got some brand new plasma bits and when I put the brand new ones on it doesn't seem to want to work at all so I'm using old plasma bits which is really getting on my nerves and I'm going to be freehanding this so um, it might not be the tidiest job in the world but needs must Tell me my stick welding's rubbish. Now I know I'm not the best stick welder in the world. Uh, and I've got some very good stick welders like Nigel around. Well, I've got Nigel. But this is fine. And I'm going to flip it over and do the same V, put a V in it, and do the same the other side. I've realised I've made an error. Uh, this piece of plate that I'm cutting doesn't actually bolt in between those two halves of the box it goes over the top of that flange. So I was cutting it and drilling holes for each of these bolts, which I don't need to do. I still need, it, still need to separate this, but it's got to go over that because it's got to bolt to these ones, hasn't it? And these go down onto the actual box. So it's actually a lot easier than I thought. I just cut a bigger hole and um, Bob's your uncle. It should be, a, should be a dead easy fix. <coughs> There's my new hole in my piece of metal, which should now go over the bottom of the steering box. So you see, here you go, that goes over there like that. There we go. And this bolts to it, and then the whole steering box assemblage bolts back to it. So here's where our plate goes, in here like this, like so. Gonna have to trim it slightly because it's a bit snug, which is always a good thing. That's fine. Now, the question is, can I get the gearbox in and up through that hole? Is there enough clearance? And I think there might be, you know. So. So yes, that, in short, put that back where it should be, that's it. Okay, now imagine that that's welded in. Watch your fingers. Yeah, and the answer is yes. 
I can poke the whole gearbox, shaft and all, up from underneath, which means I can weld this in place. Eyes. Okay. Oh, hang on. Eyes. Right. So what's going to happen is this. This is the heavy bit. I'm going to go down into the aft cabin, into the lazarette, and poke that up through that hole. Melissa, I've then got a car jack under there to support the weight, because that's really heavy. Melissa, you've got to slide this like this over the top of that. Yeah. And you've got to try and basically locate it into that hole. Okay. So if I hold this. Yeah, I know what you mean. If you do it now, practice run. Oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Okay. You need to hold it still. It won't be still. It'll be wobbling all over the place. Any good? Yeah. Wish us luck. Wait a sec. Hold on. Can you just steady it? Yeah, I've got it. So I'm now pumping with the car jack. Oh, I'm going to just reposition myself. Wait a sec. Right, that's as high as I can go. Right. Let me just lock that off on the... Yeah, OK. And I'll try and reposition it. But I just don't want it falling. You take the weight of it for a minute. I've got it. OK, just steady it. Hang on, I'm just repositioning it. I don't want it to fall on my legs. Or my face. <laughs> or any of me. Whoa. It can, it can rest on there for a sec. Well, you just slide the top half on. Right. There we go, there we go, we're nearly there. Yeah, but I've got to pull it up, darling, to get, get it in the hole. Okay. This is just wobbling all over the place. I know, it's really hard to hold this. I know. But you've got to match up the bolt holes now. I know. What I've got to do now yeah. is put all the bolts on yeah. but this, and then got to slacken it back down to get the last two on. So, these two nuts don't go on with it tightened up. So I've got to slacken these off to drop it down to put these two nuts on to tighten it all back up. Okay. Now, is that down low enough? Yeah. This is the same day, by the way. We just had a cup of tea break and I realized how filthy dirty I was and uh, had a bit of a wash and changed because it was just been such a grim day. Hot, yeah. far too hot, and uh, uh, it's falling in that grease. It's a day for the beach. So, Nigel, you said to put the same number of shims in the top of here. Well, there were no shims in the top of here, so uh, so I have not put any shims in the top of here. I hope that's right. But when I took it apart, I could, no, I could see no shims. There was a deficit of shimmage. So I'm assuming that's correct. There is a keyway, but no key. So um, I, shall, uh, I shall find a suitable key. It will manage with just the grub screw for, for now, just for test purposes. And it's, now that it's been apart several times, this is the beauty of taking stuff apart lots of times, is, is it goes back together really. It comes apart really easy next time, you know. Each time you take it apart and put it back together, 
you're more familiar with how it goes and it is more compliant with your desires. Now bear in mind we've got no um, rudder at the moment so this isn't going to move anything below the boat when we turn it. However, um, this whole gearbox was completely jammed solid uh, and we know that the, the rudder isn't the culprit um, because we've got the rudder off and that's going back on all brand new fresh stuff and this is going to go back on all brand new and fresh so um, the only reason it's a bit wobbly now is because I need to put some uh, put the drill some holes for the mounting bolts but I I shan't be doing that tonight I don't think maybe one or two so the reason this is so stupidly high is because the original setup had got a box here we're also going to have a raised floor here so in actual fact we've got, I'm going to be standing three or four inches higher but later on I suspect what we'll do is cut this whole assembly down because it, does, it can actually come down a lot um, doesn't need to be anything like that high but that's beautiful and that's nice and smooth now Nigel thank you let me just um, put some uh, stand on the seat so you don't look like yeah so in actual fact <laughs> this is fine that's all right if you've got to stand on the seats to steer it. Okay. Well, you want to stand on the seats to see over the pilot house anyway. I guess. And, you know, sitting it's, here... Yeah, it's still... It's perfectly fine. It's, but it could, do fine. With being, it could do with being lower now that we've rearranged our cockpit design. We have got a Cestral Compass, which is lovely. It's going to need balancing, swinging as they call it, because um, it's a steel boat. So I've got the magnet set up, um, the, uh, the balls as it were, set up on the inside, ready to swing that. Um, and on here, I will put the wheel on in a second. We've got our Raymarine ST60 wind speed and direction indicator, which is not working yet because it's not wired up. And we've got the Raymarine A60 chart plotter, uh, which is not working yet because it's not wired up. And the Raymarine Tridata depth speed and trip, which is not working yet because it's not wired up. And the Raymarine stroke Raytheon autopilot. I've got the 300 series brain and the uh, ST6000, I think, wheel pilot, um, which is kind of borderline for this boat, but it's the best we can do for the moment. It's all second-hand stuff. So that, I think, apart from the fact that it's all crazy high, because it's, it's the height of the original, there was, a, like I say, there was a gas locker um, under where I'm standing. We haven't got gas in that there anymore. So apart from that, I think that's spanking. And the lovely thing is, it's very simple to remove. It's a, it's a 10 minute job to take the whole lot apart. And, um, and it just makes her look a little bit more like a boat, doesn't it? <laughs> Everything we do makes her look a little bit more like a boat. Morning. What I'm doing today my plan for this job is quite simple. I've trimmed out this area here because although it looked really cool, it didn't actually leave much room to stand here at the helm. So I've got rid of that. It also means that you've got, you've got more room to sit here in the corner at the helm. So that's trimmed out. These sharp corners, by the way, various people have commented on things like that. They're gonna be rounded off, so don't worry about that. What I'm doing now is a fairly little small job. <laughs> It'll turn into a big one, I know. Uh, I'm welding this stainless, this is stainless channel. I'm welding it down here and down hither. Uh, and I'm gonna put some washboards into the transom. Um, and then the whole lot will be over painted. So it's not gonna be like exposed, polished stainless. It's gonna be painted over with epoxy. 
but the reason I'm doing it in stainless is because as you take the washboards out and back in, it scuffs the paint off, and with it being stainless, if the paint gets scuffed off, it doesn't matter. First thing I'm going to do is measure up for, for the actual washboards themselves. Okay, so what we've got now is some washboards. I've, uh, I've started welding in those stainless angles. Um, the, the boat's kind of all twisted and rippled from when it was constructed. Uh, no steel boat is straight. So there's a few places where I've had to kind of use a bit more welding wire to, to make because the gap was a little bit bigger than I would have liked. But what we've now got are two washboards that lift out, as you can see. Oh, uh, let me show you. One. Two. Ow. <laughs> um, which means that we've got the option. Um, we've got the option of having the washboards in or not. Now the curvy bit at the top of the seat, at the top of that washboard, that's just my imagination. Um, I like the idea of a, a, a seat that does this because it means when the boat's healing, oh, I'm wobbling all over the place there. I like the idea of a seat that does this because when the boat's healing you can find a flat spot to sit on. I'm not, I think that curves a little bit too much, I'm just kind of doing this by eye at the minute. I'm not sure whether to make the seat part of this top washboard, which would make it you know, decent and rigid, um, uh, or whether to, or whether to m cut the washboard off top, flush across the top and make the seat a separate section. As I say, these are kind of mock-ups because I'm going to be doing it either in ply and then glass cloth and epoxy, which is pretty good, or maybe foam with glass cloth and epoxy. So your helm position's really nice now. You've got this nice sturdy washboard transom effect to, to lean on. Um, you can sit on this side and steer, and you can sit on the other side and steer. And once I've done the, um, the kind of seat affair on the top of that washboard, you can sit up here um, to steer. I'll make some fold out feet things um, and you can sit here and I can see over the top of the pilot house with a great view of the pulpit or I can actually see right through the, the pilot house the wheelhouse and out the other side um, let me just recap for those of you that didn't know the originally here where I'm standing there was a gas locker with gas tanks uh, propane tanks and we haven't got that I don't want the propane tanks inside the boat like that so um, so I've got the deck the cockpit sole completely flush now uh, which is why it's lower and we are considering also lowering the whole pedestal by a few inches but you know it's flipping perfectly usable as it is I like this Andy is just welding up the um, holes along the tow rail basically originally we believe this boat used to have a ru wooden rubbing strake along the tow rail and there's lots of um, screw holes where that was most of them have been filled and are absolutely fine um, but there's a couple that have rusted through so he's just um, doing that now so what he's doing is holding a piece of can you demonstrate copper pipe flattened, uh, flattened copper pipe at the back of the hole um, so he can then fill, it's only a small hole, but he can fill the hole without it coming through the other side, basically. Um, but it doesn't stick to the copper. The only problem is the sound of my waves in that section is just terrible. Oh.
he's working. So this morning we, oh, I did the kind of washboardy type thing for the transom, which um, we're going to paint that bit of steel up now. And then the rest of the day, we've just spent prepping and sanding and prepping and sanding and doing prepping and sanding. Um, and, uh, oh, bits of welding. There's, there's like little holes in the tow rail that I've welded up today. Um, and then it's a lovely evening. Um, Melissa is painting. Uh, so I'm going to position you so that you can watch Melissa paint um, until sort of the sun goes down, I would imagine. You will notice also the yard is incredibly empty. We've got almost no boats around us down at this end of the yard now. Uh, and that's because they're shifting all of the boats from this end of the yard. Uh, so we're under pressure to get Melody in a position to move, 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 move. Um, because this end of the yard is no longer going to be for work at this end of the yard. It's not going to be anymore. So yes, in the next two or three months, we've got a shift anyway. What a lovely evening. <laughs> 